So this is our third podcast of our ACID unit. It is our last one for this ACID-based unit. And we're going to talk about what a titration is. And we're going to kind of set us up for the lab that we're going to be doing. A titration is a very controlled reaction. Most of the time when we do in a reaction, we just kind of dump two things together, knowing one's probably going to be limiting and one's going to be in excess. What the difference is with the titration, you're trying not to have any excess. Um, to a point. You want to get to where you know exactly how much it took to react the other substance completely. So an acid base is one type. We could do them with our redox reactions. Typically you do it when you're trying to find you do not know the concentration of one of your substances. So some vocab. Okay, we're on page um, in your packet here. If you notice we have some Cornell notes. So let's just go through some of the vocab we're going to be using. So the unknown is just what it sounds like. It's the acid or it could be the base. It's the one you do not know the concentration. It's what you're trying to solve. So then the standard, the standard is the one that you do know the concentration. So we're actually going to look at some simplified and it's going to be very, we're going to, it's going to look similar to our, our dilution, but we'll kind of talk about the formula and what's really important is we know the moles of the acid equals the moles of the base. Well, the problem is, how do we know when the when we've reached that point? Well, that's where we're going to use colors, and it's called an indicator. So an indicator is something that's going to change colors when the pH changes. So if we're titrating an acid, it's going to be a low pH. With the base, you're going to slowly raise the pH, and then it's called an end point. The end point is when you get the cha color change in the titration. Okay, the equivalence point is what we care about for the calculations. That's where, like we said, moles of acid equals moles of base. And this is where I kind of said, well, let's look at our shortcut. How do I find moles? Well, it's molarity. So molarity is moles over liters. So what if I have moles then? cross multiply, moles is going to be your molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid in liters or in milliliters in this case and it's going to be equal to the moles of the base. We can do the same thing with the base so it's going to be the molarity of the base times whatever volume of the base it took to reach that. Now many times the equivalence point and the end point we use them interchangeably. Technically they're not exactly the same but for us it's going to be okay that we can use them interchangeably. So here are some of those indicators we talked about and look at we talked about I just talked about and if you notice this at the top is a pH change and this is just kind of showing you where it changes colors. Okay here's a hint. See this one right here? I would write that down right now. I think it shows up in your worksheet and I ask you to spell it. So I would probably pause that and write that. It's pronounced phenolphthalein. That's what you're going to be using in the lab. So if you look at when it's in an acid, it's colorless. When it turns to a base, it turns a pink color. And that's how you know when you've reached the end of your titration. So Titration curves is a way to look at the data. Now, you don't, you're not going to have to draw these, but I will say you're going to have to be able to recognize. And let's kind of look at how they're made. So I have a lovely little experiment. A solution of okay, so what we're going to do is titrate. Standard so in here, if you notice, I have acid, and we're going to add some base to it. This is what you're going to do. Now look at over here, it's kind of cool. This is showing it's a strong complete. acid, so look at we have 100% separation. So notice the pH, we're starting down here, it's one molar, we're going to start with a pH of one. So we're going to add five milliliters. Note that hydrogen so when it adds the 5 milliliters, look at what happens. The, the OH combines with, combines with the H to make OH water. Well, we remember our neutralization water. reactions. This is all it also is, is a neutralization reaction. Plus Acid plus solution, base, you get a salt and a water. Increases. So the pH went up click a little bit, but not a lot hydroxide. because that OH got gobbled up by the hydrogen. So you add a little bit more. So this is why the pH doesn't change very much because the OH is getting used in that neutralization reaction. You still have excess acid in there that's controlling the pH. But if you notice, it's slowly starting to go up. 
but as the amount of the hydrogen gets used up you're starting to see the pH is going to start changing pretty quick and so what happens point right here, this is the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where moles of acid equals moles this of base. So if you look at all my acid point. is used up, and, and I do not have any excess base left, base. so moles of acid the equals moles of base, point this would be my equivalence seven. point. Note that only Okay, then look at what happens. You start having excess OH, and so since now you have excess OH, that's what's controlling the pH, and that's why you have the pH is above 7. So down here you had excess hydrogen, pH below 7. Right here they were equal, and then up here you have excess um, hydroxide. Okay, does it always look like this? No. It depends on what you are titrating. So in your notes, I just want you to, to draw a quick diagram sketch. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect by any means, but here's what's really, really important. So notice this is a strong acid with a strong base. You can kind of think of it like a tug of war. That's going to work for where we're at. And then we go into the Y a lot more in the AP. So with a strong and a strong, they equal out. So look at the pH is at 7. So the end point, the equivalence point of a strong acid with a strong base will happen of a pH of 7. Again, neutralization reaction, it's going to neutralize it. So somewhere draw your curves, but it's really important, make sure you highlight that you know the pH of 7, and that's where halfway between these points, that equivalence point, that's how you know what you are titrating. Okay, well let's compare then, what if I titrate a strong acid with a weak base? So notice you're starting with the base in the, in the beaker and you're adding the acid because the pH is going down. Notice for this one. So a strong acid, weak base, the equivalence point is a pH below 7. So look at who wins. The strong acid wins. So if you have a strong with a weak, the strong wins and has more of an effect. This isn't really the why, but it works for now. And what happens is you get a pH below 7. That's what you need to know. So let's compare then. What if I have a weak acid with a strong base? So again, the strong base. Look at this pH. So if you get a weak acid with a strong base at the equivalence point, the pH is above 7 or basic. So you'll look at who's winning, the strong base wins. So I would expect on a test that I could show you just some pH curves and say, hey, what's this the pH of, meaning strong acid, weak acid, what's it titrating? So how do you know? You check out the pH, check the endpoint. Where is that ending? So guess what? We can do the math. Guess what? The math is pretty much stoichiometry, usually. But we kind of decided in terms of time, we're going to keep it easier and just pretty much do everything a one-to-one. -one. So if it's a one-to-one, -one, we get to use that shortcut I just showed you, the moles of acid, volume of acid equals moles of base times your volumes of base. If it's not a one-to-one, -one, we don't always get to take that or you'd have to do a little bit more of the math, look at how many moles you have, and so I would probably even just do it more um, stoichiometry and look at your mole ratio, but I'm not going to get that to you right now, or this year, we're not going to. So here's how the problems look. This is in your packet. I'm going to titrate potassium hydroxide, so I'm still going to say, okay, KOH and hydrobromic acid, hydro bromic acid. Yes, you will have to write some acid names on your test. Um, it's a neutralization reaction. We always get out water, HOH, and potassium bromide. So calculate the molarity of the acid. So that means this is my unknown. So what volume of the acid did I use? So I read through and it's 31.2 milliliters. Well, what was the molarity of, excuse me, the base? It was 0.215. What was the volume of the base? It was 15.5 milliliters. 
Okay, I do not have to change them to liters because they're both in milliliters and so they can cancel out. So I'm just kind of saying, okay, so I know that moles at the equivalence point, moles of acid equals the moles of the base. How do I find moles? It's molarity times the volume. So this is what I do not know, 31.2, and I'm just plugging in what I do know, 0.215 times 15.5. And then you do your algebra, divide both sides by 31.2. It's a 1.07 molar solution. We could do it in stoichiometry to find our moles, but the difference, if you notice here, we just say it's a one-to-one, -one, then divide it by the volume, so you're doing the same thing. Okay, let's look at another one. By titration, 17.6 milliliters of, okay, you know what? See, this is where last year we weren't doing one-to-one, -one, so let's make things a little easier. Let's change this to perchloric acid. Let's work on our naming because did I say yes you are going to have to do some naming on your test. So perchloric comes from the perchlorate ion so you would look at the back of your periodic table find perchlorate that is ClO4 it has a negative one charge which means it has one hydrogen with it. Stick those two together and lithium plus one hydroxide so everything's ones so you have lithium chlor, excuse me, perchlorate and water. Again, everything one-to-one, -one, so it balances out. We get to use our shortcut. So I know my volume of my acid is 17.6 milliliters. What do I know? It took, whoops, my volume of my base was 27 point four milliliters. That's a weird volume. The molarity of the base is 0 0.0165 molar. So I want to get and know the molarity of the acid. So we know our formula. We're going to plug in what I know. Do not know the concentration. I know the volume. Squeeze in my equal sign, getting a little ahead of myself here. 0 0.165 times your volume. Divide both sides by, multiply, divide by 17.6. There's my concentration. This is your concentration of, so let's do one more. I've left you one more. Notice I'm going to change that title. Now in yours, it says calcium hydroxide. So what I want you to do is change calcium hydroxide because this would make it not a one-to-one, -one, but we're not doing that. We're crossing out this. We're leaving it one-to-one. -one. So calcium hydroxide, change it to potassium hydroxide. So it will be a one-to-one. -one. Write out your acids, practice, or excuse me, your equations, practice it, and that's where we will start tomorrow. And then we will talk about the lab, or when we see you next, and we'll talk about the lab, and you're going to do some titrations and do these calculations. We will see you on our next day.